in this top view, there is a bar with a fulcrum right over here, and three forces are acting on the bar. The angle here is 30 degrees, and the angle here is 53 degrees. The distance from the left end to the fulcrum is 0.5 meters. From the fulcrum to here is 0.4 meters. From here to the right end of the bar is 0.8 meters. We want to find the torque produced by each force and the net torque on the light bar. This light means we can ignore the mass of the bar and treat the bar as massless. So we have only three forces acting on the bar, 10 newtons, 16 newtons, and 15 newtons. And there is no mg to worry about. When we draw force diagrams, we used to draw a dot to represent the object. But if we do that here, I would have a dot for the bar and three forces coming out of the dot like this. This force diagram cannot tell us anything about torque because we cannot see any axis, distance, or lever arm. Therefore, when we deal with torque, we have to draw each force at the exact location where the force acts on the bar. Let's find the torque produced by the 10 newtons first. And that will be the perpendicular component of the force times the distance. Now, this 10 newtons has no component that's perpendicular to the bar. So the perpendicular component of the force is zero, therefore the torque is zero. Or, of course, we can use uh, the force times the lever arm. The force is 10 newtons, and what's the lever arm? The lever arm is the distance between the line of force and the axis. Now the axis is right on the line of the force. So the distance between the line of force and the axis is zero. Therefore, the torque is zero. Of course, either way you should get the same answer, zero torque. Now let's look at the 16 newtons. We can use the perpendicular component times the R. We can draw a rectangle to find the components of the 16 newtons. Now, I'm not going to draw the perpendicular component over here because the force acts right there. The force does not act over here. So I have to draw the perpendicular component acting on this point. So I have to use that one as the perpendicular component. If that's 30 degrees, this is 30 degrees. That means uh, this component is opposite to the 30 degree angle. This is the sine component. So the perpendicular component of the force is 16 times uh, sine 30 degrees. And then the distance, of course, is uh, 0.4 meters. Or, of course, I can use the force times the lever arm. The force will be the entire 16 newtons. The lever arm will be the distance between the line of force and the axis. So it will be this perpendicular distance. This would be the lever arm. The lever arm is opposite to the 30 degree angle. So it's the sine component. If we look at this right triangle, the hypotenuse is 0.4 meters. So the lever arm, the opposite side, is the hypotenuse 0.4 times the sine 30 degrees. So as we expect to have, these two, of course, should be the same. So either way, you get uh, 3.2 Newton meters. Torque, just like force, it is a vector. It has a direction. For us, in these cases, we can just look at the torque as a clockwise torque or a counterclockwise torque. So the 16 newtons, what do you think? Does it give us clockwise torque or counterclockwise torque?
the 16 newtons force with a component pushing down on the bar on the right side makes the right side go down, therefore it makes the bar rotate in a clockwise direction. Sometimes it can be hard for a student to tell whether the torque produced by a force is a clockwise torque or counterclockwise torque. In that case, we should ignore all other forces. Only look at the 16 Newton force, the bar, and the fulcrum. If this is the only force acting on the bar, this force is going to make this bar here go down, which means it's going to make it go clockwise. And that's how we tell the direction of the torque produced by that force. Now let's look at the torque produced by the 15 newtons. Again, there are two ways we can find that torque. We can use the perpendicular component of the force times the R. We need to find the perpendicular component of this 15 newtons. So again, we can make a rectangle. And this here is the component of the force that's perpendicular to the bar. This side is the same as that side, opposite to the angle, so it's the sine component. So this perpendicular component is the force 15 times sine 53 degrees. The distance to the fulcrum would be 0.8 meters plus 0.4 meters. So this is 0.8 plus 0.4. Of course, this can also be found using the total force times the lever arm. The total force is 15 newtons. The lever arm is the distance between the line of force and the axis. And that should be a perpendicular distance. This one here is the lever arm. So the lever arm is opposite to the angle. If we look at this right triangle, the hypotenuse is 0.4 plus 0.8, 1.2 meters. And uh, this is the opposite side. So this will be the hypotenuse, 1.2 meters times the sine 53 degrees. So of course, you get the same result. And this will be 14.4 Newton meter. What about direction? If this is the only force acting on the bar with this fulcrum right here, this force is going to make the right side of the bar go down. Therefore, it's a clockwise torque. So this is a clockwise torque. So the net torque on the bar would be these three added together. So it's 0 plus 3.2 plus 14.4. I'm adding these two together because they are in the same direction. Both of those are clockwise torques. So I'm going to get 17.6 Newton meter, and it's a clockwise net torque. If they are in opposite directions, then we would subtract. Now the convention. is that we would use the positive for counterclockwise and negative for clockwise torque. So if this is what we use, we would say that the net torque is negative 17.6 Newton meter because it's a clockwise direction. But of course, you do not have to use positive for counterclockwise, the negative for clockwise. You can also use positive for clockwise. In that case, of course, counterclockwise will be negative. Or you can just write the direction, clockwise that much.